As the story begins, we see a man injecting a green liquid into an egg. Almost immediately, the egg multiplies from one to two. The scene cuts, and we are shown a group of people creating a star called Elizabeth Sparkle. Elizabeth is an extraordinarily beautiful model and the host of a popular show. For a while, people would flock to the star, taking selfies with it. But slowly, their interest faded, and eventually, the star broke. No one bothered to fix it, a clear indication that people were losing interest in Elizabeth Sparkle as well. The scene shifts to Elizabeth Sparkle, now celebrating her 50th birthday. Time has not been kind to her. She is now older, but she still hosts the same show. After wrapping up the shoot for her show, Elizabeth headed to the restroom, only to find the ladies' room was closed. Reluctantly, she went into the men's restroom. As fate would have it, the show's director walked in while talking on the phone. He said, Elizabeth isn't the same anymore. Her beauty once brought us sky-high ratings, but now our TRPs are dropping. It's time to replace her. I need someone young and beautiful for the show. These words shattered Elizabeth. The beauty she had once been praised for was now gone, and her heart ached as she stared at her reflection in the mirror, noticing the deep wrinkles that had taken over her once youthful face. She was heartbroken, not just because her youth had faded, but because she was about to lose the one thing she had left, her job. She couldn't let this happen. Desperate, Elizabeth approached the director, hoping for a last chance. But he coldly responded, Elizabeth, I can't help you. My show is driven by what people want, and they want beauty. And you, you no longer have it. The director's words pierced through Elizabeth's soul. She left the hotel, her mind spiraling with thoughts of failure as she drove aimlessly. His cruel words echoed in her ears, distracting her from the road ahead. Suddenly, her car collided violently with another. Miraculously, despite the horrific accident, Elizabeth walked away and scathed. It was sheer luck. After being discharged from the hospital, Elizabeth broke down in tears. On the way home, she had seen her old pictures being taken down from billboards, symbolizing the final nail in the coffin of her career. A nurse checked her spine and handed her clothes. As she dressed, she felt something in her coat. The nurse had left her a message. This changed my life. Attached was a drive labeled, This Substance. Intrigued and desperate for hope, Elizabeth hurried home and played the drive. It contained information about a magical fluid called The Substance which had the power to reverse aging and restore youth to anyone who used it. Elizabeth was handed a vial of green fluid that would transform her body into something younger, something new. It seemed like a crazy idea, one that she dismissed with a laugh and threw the flash drive containing the information into the trash. Yet later that night, memories of her fading youth haunted her. She found herself staring at old photographs, feeling the weight of time pressing down. In a moment of desperation, she messaged the mysterious number she had been given, requesting the substance. The reply came quickly, without much conversation. She was given an address and a code. The next day, she found herself nervously walking into a secret locker room, deep within a hidden facility. Her heart raced as she accessed the locker and retrieved a small box. Inside, there was a serum, a single-use syringe, and a stabilizer meant to keep the younger body stable after transformation. Elizabeth hesitated, standing in her bathroom, staring at her aging reflection for what felt like hours. Should I really do this? She whispered to herself, torn between fear and desire. Her hand shook as she finally injected the green fluid into her body. At first, nothing happened. But moments later, a searing pain shot through her, a pain so intense that she gasped, eyes widening in terror. Her vision blurred as the sensation of splitting overwhelmed her. Then, in a shocking, almost surreal moment, her body burst open, and from within, a young, beautiful version of herself emerged. Elizabeth's breath caught in her throat as she stared into the mirror, completely mesmerized by the reflection of her younger self. Her skin was flawless, her features sharp and vibrant, just like she had always dreamed. But reality hit as she looked down at her old body, now lifeless on the floor. She carefully stitched the wounds, attaching a feeding bag to keep the old version of herself alive. That night, Elizabeth reveled in her newfound beauty, dancing around her room,
feeling like the world was hers. But the next morning, the fantasy shattered. Blood trickled from her nose, a painful reminder of the reality she had stepped into. She remembered the instructions. She had to extract a fluid from the old body's spine each day to keep her young version stable. Panicking, she rushed to do it, and after the injection, she felt normal again. More beautiful than ever. With renewed confidence, Elizabeth dressed up and went to the audition where she had been previously rejected. This time, everyone was stunned by her beauty. The director was quick to select her, and she was finally living the glamorous life she had longed for. But there was a catch. She had to change bodies every week. So, she made up an excuse, telling everyone that she needed to visit her sick mother each week, ensuring her time to shift back to her older body. Elizabeth's new life was intoxicating. Her face was everywhere, on billboards, magazines, and in ads. She was the star she had always wanted to be. But six days passed in a blur, and on the seventh day, it was time to shift back to her old self. The process was exhausting, but she knew it had to be done. She attached the feeding tube to her younger body and returned to the show, only to be met with a crushing blow. The director handed her a gift, but with it came harsh criticism. He fired her, saying she was no longer needed. Elizabeth returned home devastated her dreams of fame and beauty now shrouded in darkness. The price of her transformation had been too high, and she realized that in chasing perfection, she had lost herself. Elizabeth felt a sinking dread in her chest. The next day arrived, and as she skimmed through the newspaper, an envelope caught her eye. It was from the same company where she had gotten the substance. Inside was a message informing her that her new refill kit had arrived. With a mix of anxiety and anticipation, Elizabeth put on her coat, collected the kit, and returned home. A week passed, and Elizabeth underwent the transformation. Her new body was finally active. This new form gave her a strange thrill, like a rush of power. She reveled in her newfound abilities, sometimes staying home, sometimes vanishing into the world. But deep down, fear gnawed at her. What if her secret got out? Determined to keep the truth hidden, she made a drastic decision. She would break down a wall in her home and hide her old body behind it. The noise of her work became unbearable, and soon her neighbors grew restless. One of them even knocked on her door to complain, but the moment he saw Elizabeth's captivating beauty, his words faltered. Instead of complaining, he offered help, stuttering. If you need anything, just call. I live nearby. But Elizabeth had no need for anyone's assistance. With a smug smile, she shut the door in his face. Hours later, her plan was complete. She had built a secret room within her home, hiding her old body, along with all the photos of her youth, to erase any trace of her past self. Elizabeth was so engrossed in this new life that she forgot today was the day she was supposed to shift bodies again. Her old body, slowly deteriorating, needed nourishment. But instead of attending to it, Elizabeth invited a friend over. As she immersed herself in her work, a sudden wave of dizziness hit her. Blood trickled from her nose, and her body tingled with an eerie numbness. She knew it was time for the shift, but instead of acting quickly, greed overtook her. She wanted more time in this new, exciting body. Desperate, she injected herself with more of the substance, stabilizing her new form but leaving her old body in further decay. Another week passed and Elizabeth finally shifted back. To her horror, she discovered one of her fingers had rotted away, a consequence of her delay. Panic set in, and she called the company, voice shaking, confessing, I missed a cycle. I didn't switch bodies in time, and now my finger. It's ruined. How can I fix this? The company's cold response made her blood run cold. There is no solution. What's done is done. Elizabeth's fear spiraled. The company revealed something more terrifying. You are not two separate people. Your new body came from your old one. You must be careful. Shaken, Elizabeth collected her refill kit and decided to visit a restaurant to clear her mind. As she sat there, an old man approached her, speaking in cryptic tones. His words sent chills down her spine. Has your new body started eating yet? His eyes bore the same mark she had once noticed on a nurse's hand in the hospital. This old man was the aged version of that nurse. 
panic gripped her, and without a word, she bolted out of the restaurant. At home, Elizabeth tried to calm herself. She wanted to find happiness in this old reality too. She called a friend, dressed up beautifully, applying makeup with meticulous care, resembling her perfect new self. But as she was about to leave, her eyes fell on posters of her new self, staring back at her with haunting perfection. All the confidence drained from her. She tore at her hair, smudged her makeup, and collapsed in despair. Her mind spiraled out of control, and in a frenzy of depression, she ate until exhaustion took over, drifting into a restless sleep. The next day, we see Elizabeth has made the body switch once again, but the consequences of her choices loom over her like a dark cloud. It was time for her show. Elizabeth was now dancing, shooting for her show. Suddenly, she felt a strange lump on her lower body. Confused, she immediately stopped shooting and rushed to the washroom. As she scrolled through her body and pulled the lump out of her belly button, she realized it was a chicken, the same chicken Elizabeth had mentioned the previous night. The sight of it terrified her. She woke up with a jolt, realizing it was all a dream. In the morning, she switched bodies as planned and got ready for her show. But upon arriving, she was shocked to see the crew packing up the shooting equipment. They informed her that the show was canceled. Panicked, she rushed to the director. But her anxiety turned into joy when the director revealed that instead of the regular show, she would be hosting the New Year's Eve event. Elizabeth was overjoyed and immediately accepted the offer without a second thought, even though New Year's Eve was the day she was supposed to switch back to her original body. Elizabeth, now in her new body, embraced this version of herself for several days. To maintain it, she frequently injected stabilizer fluid from her old body into her current one. However, this had a detrimental effect on her original body. Over time, when she finally switched back, she was horrified to see that her old body had aged rapidly, becoming frail due to excessive fluid extraction. Seeing her own deteriorated form filled her with anger and resentment toward her new self. She started smashing every photo of her new body hanging in her house and even covered up the mirrors to avoid seeing herself in this broken state. Desperate and distressed, Elizabeth called the company and asked if there was any way to reverse this or if she could get her original body back. The company representative told her bluntly that what was done could not be undone. However, she could stop everything if she wished and live the rest of her life in the condition her old body was now in. But this was unacceptable to Elizabeth. Just then, she received a call about the show. In a rush, she switched bodies again and injected herself with three months' worth of substance from her old body into her current one. For three months, Elizabeth enjoyed her life in the new body, but on the night before New Year's Eve, her fluid ran out. She had brought a girl home that night, and suddenly felt her organs starting to collapse. Panicked, she rushed to extract more serum from her old body, but this time, no serum came out. Terrified, she called the company and demanded to know why there was no serum left. They informed her that she had used it all up and would have to wait for new serum to develop. In the meantime, she needed to switch bodies. Elizabeth's condition worsened as she switched back to her old body. The noises of the switching process were loud, and the boy who was in the room with her heard everything. Suspicious of what was happening, he came to investigate, but Elizabeth quickly locked herself in the washroom before he could see her. She had become incredibly old, frail, and even bald. Moving was difficult for her. Overwhelmed with fear, Elizabeth called the company again and told them she wanted to stop everything. The company agreed to her request, and she finally decided to let it all go. Elizabeth's body looked terrifying. She tried her best to hide it under her clothes, trembling with unease. She was on her way to collect the termination fluid, her hands cold with fear. After obtaining the serum, a wave of hesitation struck her. The manager's warning echoed in her mind. Once you inject this, your body will remain as it is forever. Her heart raced, her chest tight with dread. She glanced at herself in the mirror, fury boiling inside. This was all Sue's fault. Overcome with rage, she half-injected the serum into Sue, but as she realized the stakes, her upcoming award show, the praise she craved, she stopped. Her mind was torn between anger and ambition. Sue didn't wake up, no matter how hard Elizabeth tried. 
Panic seeped in. Her thoughts whirled, and she decided to switch bodies. But even that failed. Desperation clawed at her heart as she activated Sue through her spinal activator. Suddenly, both of them were alive, fully awake and alert. But the moment Sue realized what Elizabeth had planned, her fury exploded. She attacked Elizabeth relentlessly, hitting her over and over again, until Elizabeth's skull cracked, ending her life. Sue stood over Elizabeth's lifeless body, a sickening realization dawning on her. She had made a terrible mistake. Now, even the activation substance was out of reach. In a daze, Sue cleaned up the mess and left for her New Year's program. The crowd cheered for her enthusiastically, but something was wrong. Sue felt a strange sensation in her body. Blood dripped from her nose, and she rushed to the washroom, terrified. When she opened her mouth, two of her teeth fell out. She touched her other teeth, and they too crumbled. That's when the horrifying truth hit her. Because Elizabeth had died, her own body was decaying. Sue needed the activation serum to survive. Desperate, she hurried home. But inside the elevator, one of her nails and part of her ear fell off. She felt pure panic, but forced herself to act normal when another person entered the elevator. By the time she reached home, she was a wreck, barely holding herself together. She quickly injected the activation serum, but nothing happened. Her heart sank. Then she remembered the final substance, the one they were only supposed to use once. Without thinking, she injected it into herself. Instantly, pain shot through her. Her body split open at the waist, and from inside emerged a grotesque fusion of Sue and Elizabeth, a monstrous creature. Sue was no longer fully herself. She had become a horrifying hybrid. Her mind so twisted, she couldn't even comprehend what she was anymore. In a confused daze, she put on a mask of her old face and headed to her show. As she walked onto the stage, her mask fell, revealing her horrifying, monstrous face to the crowd. Gasps of terror filled the room. People screamed, calling her a monster, fleeing in all directions. One man, trembling in fear, grabbed a baseball bat and struck Sue's face with all his might. Her head was torn apart, blood splattering across the studio. In that moment, her body crumbled into bizarre, writhing pieces, crawling like insects toward the door, leaving a bloody trail behind. Her face remained on the stage, twisted into a gruesome smile, gazing up at the ceiling. And then, in a flash, it vanished, leaving only blood. The next morning, workers cleaned up the bloodstains, and the haunting story of Elizabeth and Sue ended there, leaving nothing but a dark, chilling memory.